This is a hornworm. The creatures that haunt my nightmares. Any gardener's nightmare. A tomato plant's worst enemy. And we're gonna paint it on a jerk bait and a popper. Something completely different. I'm basically just clearing out what's left in the cup on this bait, on both of these baits. Yes, I am not taping the bill on this. The entire worm is green. Uh, I'm gonna make this entire jerk bait green. There's lots of really cool accents on this thing, which is super cool. Just like this popper. So we've got some white V notches in it, some black markings uh, may or may not do that with an airbrush probably going to do that with a detail either paintbrush or um, any kind of ink pen that's light fast and acrylic based water based um, or lacquer we can do that and then it's got some almost um, probably for every section there is a false eye on the side of it so we're going to put those in as well and for that i'm just going to use a, a small cutout and stencil that in with some hand cut stencils. So that's the base. It looks like it's one color, it's really not. There are three different shades of green. There's like a really light spring green, there's an apple color green, and then there's almost a fluorescent or metallic light green. So we're gonna incorporate all three of those, some black, some white, a little bit of tannish brown, and we should be good to go with this pattern. It's gonna be a fun one, so stick around. Now in prep to get this ready before we do any kind of painting, I mentioned the false eyes and I'm just gonna find a little piece on this random stencil. It's just like bubbles or circles. And I'm gonna find one that I think is the right size. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And I kinda like, what do we got? I just saw one that looked pretty good. I think I like this side right here. I'm just going to take a little corner of that and just cut it right out. There's still plenty of this stencil left to use. We could even cut it again for a number of other things. But then um, as far as the size line up against here, you don't want one that's too big or too small. So for both of them, I think I can get away with using this one right here. So all I need to do take a little bit of painter's tape and tape everything that we don't want to use. And then just tape it to both sides. It'll be a little sturdier and the paint won't leak through. And then take what's left, cut this a couple more times or tear it. It's not a big deal. Both of these, I think, are the same size. So in order to get the maximum amount of coverage, this is what I think I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna put this like that. So now we're just kind of singling out that little piece. And that makes it a whole lot easier. And now we just have this one piece singled out for exactly what we want. So that when we come back and do those false eyes, we have a perfect little circle. So we'll use that later. Also, if you looked at the picture that's up in the corner of this, uh, this frame, we're gonna be using one of these as well and just lightly spray some white uh, before we put those false eyes down. Okay, I've got a moss green that I'm gonna do on the base of these, on the bellies. And then we're gonna work up into a lighter color. This is always going to translate as a color mix, and I normally go light to dark on this, but since we kind of fade up into a lighter color, I'm just going to use the, uh, the darker moss first. I'm going to do the same thing on the jerkbait. 
And this is just a base layer, so I'm not really too worried about what my PSI is. Right now I'm running like 25 or 30. It's coming out pretty quick for what I normally do. But we're just throwing down base layers, so it's not a big deal. Get a little bit of overspray, and you can see there's some overspray here. I'm going to bring in a little bit of tropical. Traditionally, this is a fairly light green. We're just going to work up into our darker colors here. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. You too, thank you. You're right. <laughs> Bye. That was Shirley. She's our male lady. And she's awesome. She also fishes. But she's, uh, we're saltwater. Her family grew up um, Gulf side of Florida. So, we always talk fishing when she comes in. See? There we go. We got a couple of weird shadows on this today because my overhead light that's up there is, for some reason, maybe the ballast is about to go out, but... Um, I've been using a fairly decent, not too harsh top light that Cody Kirk put in, but the ballast I think is about ready to go. So if there's any flicker in this today, my apologies, try and get that uh, sorted out as soon as possible. So we've got our tropical green fading into our moss green, tropical green fading into moss green. And then we'll do just a little bit of pearl lime. Pearl lime is really cool because it gives a little bit of a metallic look to it, which you won't find per se on a hornworm, but for the purposes of fishing, uh, a lot of times you want a little bit of shimmer in, uh, in what you're doing, what you're throwing. So yes, this could also double as a baby bass, uh, but more, moreover, we're gonna, we're gonna make this thing look exactly like a hornworm. We're as close as we can get. As close as we can get. You'll notice that I'm not running the fan today just because I want some good audio in this. The fan that I've got, I'm using it, but I've been using my respirator a lot more. And the reason is this fan is on its last legs. It needs to be replaced. And after a while, this has been running for three years now, um, goes through the wall and outside but um, it's just, uh, it's been used sometimes seven days a week, but mostly five to seven, five or six days a week for the last three years straight, solid, 10, 12 hours a day. Um, that's a lot of use, um, just like if you were in an industrial kitchen. But uh, I was talking to Mike and really need something that's a little bit stronger my volume of work has increased exponentially over the last few years so i'm doing a ton more pieces so this thing has taken quite the beating so i gave these a quick heat set off camera while we were waiting and if you look at the third ish like kind of it's almost a chartreuse it almost kind kind of looks like this limelight green. It's super light, but I don't know if it's going to be that much of a difference unless I can make some random areas with some white first. So a lot of times if you need to accent something on top of a fairly light color just to give it some variation, what I'll come back and do is I'll take my white, which is a pretty decent opaque, that wicked colors it's not the createx createx gets so chalky i've started buying in bulk this is uh i think it's a 32 ounce or 16 ounce 16 ounce um and then we'll come back and just do a little bit of not quite random because it's in every segment on this thing but what we're going to do basically is we're going to come in at a much lower psi there we go and just kind of lay some areas in or maybe just something to give it a little variation and then we'll lay color on top of that. So when we do lay color on top of that, just to show you here first, since I have the capabilities,
that white picks up that lighter variation. I've got a little bit of fluorescent yellow in the cup and to that I'm going to add some of this limelight green. Mix it up. And I might even throw a little bit of white into that. Just to lighten it up a shade more. Just, I kind of want it as light as I can possibly get it. And we're still going to put a true white down first. Just so that we can get some variance. Because when you're looking at it, you really want to be able to distinguish three separate colors on this. Because you can see them in the worm. So just really lightening this up with some opaque white will do the trick. Uh, that's not bad. I can see the difference in that a whole lot better than I could on when I just put that pearl lime down. So yeah, I think, I think that's a decent, definitely a decent variation. I can see some contrast in that. In order to keep the white from overspraying, because it is opaque and it is white, White has a tendency to uh, kind of give a lot of splatter. So I've taken the tip off of this so you guys can see that. So now we're just going to bring the first bait in. Make sure there's no clots on the, uh, on the tip here. And then I'm just going to come in and on this, I'm just going to go lightly back and forth. Almost in a zigzag, but a little bit on the nose. Same thing on the popper. A little bit on the nose. And then just grab a little zigzag down the side of this. Just across the back. And try and limit as much overspray as possible. With a clean cup. Don't need a whole lot of that. That's probably way too much for what we're doing. Um, but I mix too much. We're going to do the same thing with this. Just take the tip off again. Come down in the same pattern. Just kind of follow those lines right down. So now we have a very definitive contrast between those last two colors, even though they're both light. And then we're just going to follow the lines like we did on the other one on this jerk bait. Nice and light. My PSI right now is running about 10. I could probably do a little bit lighter, but it is an opaque, so I want to make sure it comes out. So I don't need a whole lot for what we're going to do, but there's a lot of very thin black lateral lines across the spine of this. So I'm just going to take about a drop and then I've kind of whittled this down with good scissors. Uh, little tiny Fiskars are fantastic. Say that five times fast. No, don't. You don't have to. Um, just take a tip of the brush, trailing off the excess so that you see how fine this line is down here. That's what we're pretty much going to do across the back and we're going to randomize that a little bit. Make sure this is in frame and not dip my little bands in it. And we're just gonna come across 
almost like tiger stripes. Yeah, I could use a stencil, but this is more fun. This does turn into a really pretty butterfly later on, but it just wreaks havoc on tomato plants in your garden. Now, the question of the hour is, do I think I would ever see a hornworm in the water? I don't know, maybe. Uh, Catawba worms are. Or Catawba. Catawba. Any of the above. So this is what we're pretty much gonna do. Begin time lapse right now. We have got the black lines down on these patterns. Relatively happy with that. I think I'm going to clean up some of, the, some of the mess that I've made down here, get these paint brushes cleaned up. Then we're going to go into the false eyes. Well, before we get these false eyes in, remember we're going to do that with this stencil. I've cut a triangle or at least uh, two points or one point into this. And we're just gonna lightly come on with our white. And we're gonna cut some V's into everything we've got here. And just make those little segments. Just like that. Just wipe the excess off as you go. And this doesn't have to be super exact. Just the representation of the segments. Now, if you notice, there's no there's no segment, the maybe top fourth or fifth of the bait because of the head. So not a big deal there. But just remember to always start at the tail and work your way forward. One more on this guy. And just wipe that off. And while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and put our little white dots on here with this stencil. I actually have a better stencil that's not as junked up. I use this for shad. When, uh, when paint, after a while, these things kind of, there's only but so much use as you can get out of them, no matter who they come from. Um, but after a while, these are great for just like random shad dots on the gill plates. But on this, we're just going to go ahead and do a very light spray of these whites. Because that's all over. These little white dots are all over this caterpillar. They are a huge garden pest. Another uh, good pattern for something like this, if you're going to stay in the line with caterpillars and reptiles, is a five-line skink. They are everywhere. I'm going to kick the pressure up on this a little bit. There we go. 
just to get a, a little bit more. There we go. Now it's actually coming through, coming through that stencil. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all over it. And I'm barely pressing the trigger down. This is a dual action. So there, it's pretty easy to run. Had a little problem moving that. Nice and light. And just a little bit on the belly. And that should do it for this one. Bring this jerk bait in and do the same thing. I'm gonna hit the bill real quick from an angle and then just kind of run down in a little more randomized pattern, a little bit more length to get on this. Come down the sides. Nice and light. And then just a little bit on the belly. Not too much. So now we're just about ready to put these false eyes on. And we are going to put a little bit more black accenting on the belly and the lower sides of this. So on these hornworms, there's nine or 10 false eyes on each side. We're gonna get as accurate as possible, but keeping in, in mind the size of this. Now this is a 120 um, Duo Realis style bait. And we do have one up at the head. So I'm gonna put one right behind the eye. And the, on the... They kind of run in an oblong shape, but this is going to be okie dokie for this. And you'll notice they kind of, they kind of go to the end of each segment. So you're going to want to try and keep that as consistent as possible. Try and space them as evenly apart on your bait as you can. So I've got one behind the eye, and then I've dropped four, I've dropped eight on this. Come over and do the same thing on the other side here. We'll do, let's flip this over. Come in and do one behind the bait eye and then i'm going to start from here so i'm not working on top of myself and smearing it we're going to start from the back and then space that as evenly as we can now caterpillars especially these little guys are usually pretty cunning when it comes to being able to blend in they have amazing camouflage for a tomato plant and one little disturbing fun fact, they can eat up to 16 grams or four and a half times their weight in a single day. One hornworm can completely defoliate an entire tomato plant. And their life cycle as a caterpillar is, um, well, let's say it's uh, way too long. It's two to three weeks. And then they'll drop off the plant when they're full as a tick bury in the ground and come out as the five spotted hawk moth so on this little popper here make sure i'm still in frame get you a little bit centered up there do the same thing come behind the eye and i'm going to use black eyes for this on the uh, on the duo here 
I'm going to go ahead and put the duo eyes in, and then I'm just going to paint them black. I could probably paint them the same color green, something I probably should have thought of before I started this, but because um, there really aren't any, except for the false ones, there really aren't any eyes on this caterpillar at all. Maybe there are and you just can't see them. I don't know. But I'm going to go the exact same distance apart. And on this one, we're only going to get five in. We're going to get four on the body and one right behind the eye on the gill plate. And then drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it in the same way on the other side. Right behind the eye. And this is just a, something fun. It's something different. I don't think I've ever done a hornworm before. But I saw that bitchin' Camaro on the way to work this morning, and I'm like, damn. Some of you guys the other day were giving me hell about how clean my stuff looks. And yes, it's a tool. But um, this, which one is this? This is my SK. So this SK has been running for five or six years now with me. I've got one that I just retired recently, but that's only because I wanted to get another airbrush and re not replace the head and the tip and all that stuff. So, yep, I'm fanatical. Maybe I'm slightly OCD on this stuff, but hey, it's, uh, it's my tools and I can do what I want. Okay, so all this is, let's get you in frame. All this is is sand mixed with sepia. Super easy to acquire both of them. Sand, sepia, two S words. Some people say sepia, that's cool too. Sand and sepia. I'm gonna add just a little more sand to lighten it up. Just a tad, not too much. And then I've got the C plus out here. It's the HPCS line, but it's a C plus. It's got a 22 instead of a 0.35. So this is born to detail. And this is now in my routine. This is one of the ones that stays at the side here, loaded and ready to go for everything that I spray. Cause I am doing a few more detailed things. Um, I also like spraying lacquers with this better. So, slowing down and there we go. But this is easy. All we're doing is just kind of the edges. So, I don't need to do a whole lot here. We're just going to kind of see. Hopefully, you guys, this will pick up. Just adding to what's already there and just going around the edge and making you want to keep that white in there if you can Then we're going to drop some black in the middle of it. Kind of with my thumb, just kind of pull all the excess paint off. There's not a whole lot when you're blowing out of a 22. It's a much finer point. Just kind of accenting the white here. So there's that. We're going to come back and do the popper here.
And then just keep in mind, you're hitting more of the stencil than you are the actual space underneath of it. And just add that in. Have a good lunch, Tristan. Thank you, you too. I will when I go. Especially for top bar. So would you hit this more in rivers where you have the possibility? I mean, they like the nightshade family, but tomatoes aren't the only nightshades right. out there. Yeah, so. I would fish them, especially down in the south. We have those a lot down there. Yeah. So Oconee River would be awesome for shoalies. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, fishing that in the morning. Um, or anywhere you got a lot of overhang. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like I said, it could be just about anything. Yeah, so I would so. agree with that. Um, I would even agree with anything along, even North Georgia. You know because, what you should try next is a Catawba worm. Well, you know, I just got a um, Kelly Barefoot from um, Catch Outdoors that we get the Danny Joe's worms from. He's the mm -hmm. owner up there. He sent me a mess of Catawbas, and they're out in my Jeep, and I will happily share them. He gave me like a hodgepodge of colors, and they're about four and a half inches long. Ooh, that's perfect. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll show them awesome. to you. Yeah, they're badass. Good deal. So, and he's getting ready. Well, I can't talk about what he's getting ready to make. He's going to yeah. make something really, really cool yeah, that he doesn't have on his on his repertoire yet. yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, anyways, yeah. enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Yep. So yeah, we just let that camera roll. That was Tristan. You've seen him in the Catch Code documentary. He is a really, really talented musician as well as angler. His whole family fishes. Um, one of the things that I enjoy about us folks here at Bullshad is that it's not just come to work and do your job and go home. There's just so much in common. We all have that common thread with one another and uh, that makes it that much better. So I just decided to take a paintbrush and do these little guys, each one. It's not gonna kill me. And they are, they almost, I don't know if this sounds right or not, but they almost look like the Under Armour logo in the middle of this. Maybe that's, the, I'd have to look at the logo again, but so just put a little random splotch of black just to give it that, that look that it's got, because it's a false eye. So somewhat of a pupil. Yeah, I see that too. I missed the tan on that one. I think we'll let it slide because I've already cleaned the airbrush cup because I'm fanatical. Krista, Daniel, Peyton, give me a hard time. So if you don't know these people that I just shouted out here, um, they are amazingly gifted and talented painters in their own right. So Peyton has done... Uh, KGB for years and years, swim baits. Krista is, she's beyond up and coming. So she's had Colorado custom lures for, oh my gosh, years now. Um, I think she came on the circuit maybe three or four years after I did when I wasn't doing what I'm doing now. I was just sitting in my garage in Jonesboro, Arkansas, painting a little something, something, throwing down some crankbait stuff, hanging out with Michael and Garcia, all those fellas. Dom. I haven't seen anything from Dom lately. Um, also a really, really good airbrush artist. And I think she started painting too. I think she's doing like um, wildlife and not quite illustration, but more like abstract watercolor and stuff like that. It's super cool. So. Dominic Goodrow. She's been around a while. People that I miss. These are the people I miss. Jenny Jane Capriva. Um, there for a while, there was just a bunch of us. And you get used to the faces and new, one, new ones come along like Daniel Karakaburu London and he's absolutely amazing. Jeremy Durham. He's good. He's real good. There's, there's just so much talent out there now. And I hope that I've been able to teach at least some of these guys something. But most of the ones that are in it now and doing it pro or semi-pro or part-time pro or just making some money at it, 
they just stay like you just grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and they're still around um some people aren't anymore and they're doing other things and different aspects of art which is also cool nothing wrong with that so we're coming down the home stretch on this pattern one thing that i might do since i have this black paintbrush out and it's really really uh, thin the the paintbrush itself what is this this is a one but i've whittled it down into like a zero kind of a deal i'm going to come back and just behind the white triangle that we did or not a triangle it's just a v-notch i'm going to add just a little bit of accent and black behind it doesn't have to be straight at all um, if you notice on the actual representation of this caterpillar it is um, the black and white for the segment separation is more lined up with these little black striations going down the sides of the of the worm get that back in frame for y'all because we're just about done with this pattern this is very close to being me being okay with it it's just a fun one yeah I, you know, Tristan and I were talking about what we throw it absolutely he's he's got a lot of confidence in green that's like one of his primary colors and a lot of people tend to shy away from green but he does really well here in Georgia especially southern Georgia middle to southern so we got that and then I'm gonna come back on this little popper dude. I have no idea where the blank came from. This is one of the ones that, um, this one is, um, was gonna paint up for Kent Smith, but he has said he has more than he needs and to thank everybody for what he got. Hope he's doing okay. Hope he's getting everybody's baits out that he's committed to. I know he's been in and out of the hospital. I can't really speak to his health right now because I'm not around him. I'm just trying to help a dude out. That's what I do. Trying to help as many of you guys as I can. So this is the hornworm pattern. We get to dunk both of these baits, which is cool. I don't have to take it up to the spray room. And I think that it's really gonna come out nicely. And then if you notice on the bottom, there's just, there's just a couple of little lines that almost are an upside down M or a really lazy W. And we're gonna put those in. And then just some random squiggle. Not too much though. I mean, this has got a lot going on as it has already. Let me grab just a little bit more paint off of here. And then little squiggle come back and finish the bottom of this one I'm gonna put some eyes in um, on this duo I've, they've got different eyes so I could put round ones in but eh, it's not gonna look the same so I'm just gonna throw in the normal ones get that excess off of there throw in the normal duo eyes and then um, do something along the lines of uh, painting them black. I could get them real shiny. They're, they don't have black eyes. That's the thing. They don't have eyes at all. Had I been thinking properly when I started this little project, I would have put the eyes on first, having looked at the, um, <laughs> the picture of it. But I didn't. I was, uh, I had Camaro brain. Yes, yeah, if, you, if I didn't show it already, here's, here's the driving segment. In nine by 16, not 16 by nine. So it's gonna be like a, 
like an Insta story in the middle of this spray session. I, I oddly like this color. I like the color a lot. I need to paint something with that color on it today. Oh, I know. A hornworm. I'm going to paint a hornworm today on a jerk bait. Maybe a duo. I love it. Now on this popper, one thing that I found in the arsenal that I didn't even know I still had were a little bit fancier. They're black and then they've got almost like a holographic middle and then a black pupil. And they're five millimeters and these eyes are five millimeters. So this might be the ticket for this particular one. Because this does take a five millimeter eye. And you really just don't need much. Damn, that's too much. Just wipe that off with the glove. Try not to get it on the rest of the bait. That's the one thing with this Loctite that I use. It flies out. And it's real easy to get on everything. So I think that looks pretty cool. It's almost kind of close to what's there. This one is going to be a little different though. And this is a teardrop shape eye, which is unique to only a few baits, Duo being one of them. So you really have to have the right style and drop that in there. But it doesn't matter with these because it's going to get painted black. So, I mean, it could probably get away with these yellow and black, but I just want to go ahead and do it the right way and get it a little bit closer to that false eye that's there. I think we got closer on the, um, on the popper. Either way, I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. And it's actually going to look a little bit brighter and a little poppier once the clear coat goes on. Just real quick, black these eyes in. Um, 10, that's about 10 PSI, if you're asking. So I'm using something different today. This is a Uniball Signo. There you go. And writes very well, most of the time. Just got to get it started. And there we have it. This has been a fun one. I hope you guys have had a good time with this as well. Let's get this into some clear coat. So just to finish up the video, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I always enjoy doing these things for you guys. This was particularly fun. It's unusual. I don't normally do hornworms, and I don't know that we'd ever see one on the bank of a river. You're noticing that, yes, I still use KBS Diamond Clear on crankbaits. I do not currently use it on swim baits, not just because they're jointed. The sheer volume, I can't brush, and you definitely can't dip KBS. Um, there are some other products out there, but I'm using 2K high-end auto, and we spray it upstairs in a room full of venting and Tyvek and all that stuff. So cheers, happy casting, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.